Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with the veritable Prince of Pakistani Pop, Ali Zafar. Okay, now, conversations are good, right? So let's, let's, let's shift this one a little. I'm going to go back to the lighter part of your career. Now, everybody's a brand, right? And um, whether they they're create themselves or uh, corporate sponsors create them, whatever. Um, you've been mustered as a bit of a brand yourself. And that is that of the party animal, the pretty boy, the, the sex symbol, right? Now, uh, we were doing some research on you. We know that, uh, that Eastern Eye, uh, a leading British magazine, called you the, uh, one of the top 10 sexiest men in Asia. And uh, this question has been asked you before. This is nothing new. Um, but my question is beyond that. My question is that how do these ratings, this, this branding, this, uh, this stereotyping, make you feel now, considering that, uh, do you feel boxed in or do you take these creatively? Do you take these uh, seriously? I think different uh, celebrities go through this dilemma of uh, rejecting and rejecting uh, uh, certain perceptions of media, which they themselves have fed them with. Uh, they complain about it later. So I don't blame anyone uh, for putting me into a category which perhaps I wouldn't want to be in and I would want to be known for something greater than uh, just a sex symbol or something like that. I would like someone to say that, you know, he's, he's an intelligent guy and he can whatever. But uh, I don't blame, blame them either. So, I mean, they can say whatever they want to. Uh, coming back to your <laughs> question... I've forgotten what the question The was. question, Ali, is that, uh, <laughs> now, for example, I'll make it simple for you. You've gone on the record and you've said that, uh, you've admitted that brands have created an image of women being around me and uh, me being this party boy, this party animal. This is a direct quote. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that you, you, it, it just sounded to me when I was doing my research on you, it just sounded to me that you're sitting there saying, oh, I'm this innocent little, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. normal guy and all these, these evil corporate sponsors <laughs> have made me a sex symbol. Otherwise, everything is go, man. I'm, I'm kosher, I'm cool, I'm a normal guy. How true is that? You've been, you're pretty smart that way. You won't just let that happen to you. You've enjoyed this. You've reaped some benefits from it. I have. I have enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't say that I, I don't, I wouldn't complain about it. The only thing... But is it time now, to break, now a, I, break away from no, it? No, now I remember now when I said that. The thing was that once you've done something, now you want to move on to something more meaningful, serious, or something different, whatever that is. So, I mean... Uh, I was categorized into, you know, if somebody wanted to pick me up for a job, the imagery would be uh, a dancing guy, he's, somebody's always jumping around and walking and full of energy and life and all that. But it is actually, you can ask my wife, I'm not like that in real life. I'm, I'm, I'm very dull, low and serious. That's my, when I'm practicing music for myself, I practice practice classical music, I practice blues and jazz and that kind of stuff. But people, when they hire me for a job, they still want to, you know, use me for that. So that's when I said that I would prefer to be used differently also for something more intense. But considering, I'm going to drive that point, which we mentioned earlier again about social responsibility, considering the times we're going through, isn't it time? Isn't it time for you to make a real actionable effort to break out of this pretty boy sex symbol mold? I think I shouldn't try for it. I shouldn't force myself for it. I mean, why run away from something? Um, that's, that's not even bad. <laughs> I, mean, so, I mean, it'll ha happen naturally. It'll, the, uh, the, the evolution will come naturally. That's what I think. And I also do think that I have kind of broken away from that. I mean, from the recent stuff that I've done, the kind of feedback that I've gotten. I mean, I had the choice of dressing up in a black leather jacket or leather jeans at the Coke studio, but I did not. I chose to wear our Eastern dress and I chose to sing uh, Eastern uh, folk music, traditional music, so that I could introduce the youth with, uh, with our roots. And I think that by doing that, I'm already doing what you've recommended. But having said that, it's never enough. See, here's the thing. Speaking of never enough, right? Because in the Boston Globe, this is a couple of years ago when you were when you were touring. I think it was your second album, 
And this writer asks you, uh, you know, what are you doing in um, what are you doing in the states? And you say, I would like to connect with my fans here and also be a kind of a cultural spokesman for my country. That's a quote. And then you go on to say that the idea is to give the youth of Pakistan something they can be proud of. Now we have this thing called uh, the Talkback Forum, where we invite people, invite our fans to to send questions in, and we we put this up as a quote from you. And a lot of young people said, well, really, if he's uh, really interested in the youth, uh, these are some of the suggestions they said. He said he could teach the IDP's, uh, IDP kids uh, music. Uh, they said uh, he could give a free concert or raise funds. They said uh, he could start building up the music industry from within. He's always complaining about how the government needs to build it up. Why doesn't he do something about it? And he, the one, one person even said, and this was just last night, that he can go to the local hospital in Lahore, because he lives in Lahore, and he can go see and sing to the victims of the moon market bombings. Basically, they're saying, and these are your fans, they're saying that Ali Zafar needs to be out there at a point when we're at war. Yeah. Uh, I'll answer your question one by one. Put the first one in before. What was the first suggestion? Teaching IDP kids music. Yeah. A suggestion. I've always uh, endorsed this fact that not just the IDP kids, but kids in general in schools should be taught music. And I've told the principals and everybody. Now regarding the IDP kids, I did a song, I've done a song and it's in the studio and that's gonna be dedicated to them and that's gonna be released soon. Uh, actually going there and teaching them music, yes, I haven't been able to do that because of my traveling otherwise, but I would love to do that. When I'm abroad touring, uh, like recently the show that I did in Houston, I was uh, awarded as uh, ambassador uh, from Pakistan by the, uh, the mayor of Houston as a, as a goodwill ambassador. And when I go there, I give interviews to these newspapers and press and all these and try to tell them and keep telling them that, listen guys, whatever perception you have of Pakistan and whatever, whatever perception you print of Pakistan, in my opinion, is not the true Pakistan. You're deceiving the international community uh, by a lot of things, and you would have seen that on my interview on BBC also, and uh, in, in this newspaper also. And I think this is also doing a job, I mean, to change perceptions internationally of, of the international media, because that would make a difference also. Maybe it'll, it'll teach them to look at things a little differently, and then, make differences on the grassroots level rather than on the surface.